I call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that the notice of this meeting was posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. It is 6 o'clock. If you will stand with me, Mrs. Bush is going to lead us in the invocation, and Mrs. Powell uh, is going to uh, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us here tonight safely. I pray that you watch over our state and watch over our residents in Conroe ISD with the uh, rain that is coming and has continued for this month and protect all of our students and families. Give us wisdom tonight on all the decisions we will be making and thank you for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Mrs. Bush and Mrs. Powell. Uh, item 2A, Special Des District Recognition, Destination Imagination. Dr. Stockton. We are excited tonight to have in our presence the global <coughs> champions. And I'll ask uh, Headmaster Dr. Susan Caffrey to come to the podium and introduce the team. Thank you, Dr. Stockton and board for this opportunity. Destination Imagination is a program that encourages teams of students to have fun, take risks, and frame challenges while incorporating science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, or STEM, the arts and service learning. DI's goal is to help teams of students to be creative in every aspect of their lives. I would like to introduce a group of students from the class of 2015 who have worked together for three years at a competition that requires curiosity, courage, and creativity in order to solve a particular problem. The challenge selected was called Fairy Tales and required the team to have a fairy tale type story with a character with a phobia, an optical illusion, and two types of art. The technical aspect of this challenge was met with a chameleon costume complete with lights that were programmed to change colors with the animal's moods. This team has also competed, advanced and competed at DI Global Finals for three years, a new record with DI. I'm proud to introduce the entire team of which four or five are here, Andrew Cahill, and if you'll come up please, Nicole Chen, Kayla Kelly, Sarah Mohammed. Palomi, uh, Srivastava, Eric Young, and Victoria Youngblood. Thank you very much. I would also like to recognize Mrs. Bobby Lowenberg, who was their sponsor and has been for the past three years. As they're making their way around, I just want to say on behalf of the board uh, that it never ceases to amaze me the things that our students can do. And I'm just so pleased with all the work that you have done 
destination, imagination. You have put forth all the effort uh, possible, and we're just so proud of you. And we'll say thank you again for all you do. I am very, very fortunate to be part of Destination Imagination just because I get to see what 13 years of a great education provided by Conroe produces. I get to see a product. I get to see them collaborate. I get to see them make decisions. I get to see them produce a product and then to present it to people. And I think as teachers, we don't actually get to see that too often. We teach, we give them information, but we don't get to see an end product. And I just want to tell you, because of Conroe ISD, I get to see a great end product. I get to see these kids go on and do phenomenal things. I get to see the kid who never really came out of their shell, and then all of a sudden is singing, is doing engineer work. I get to see a kid who doesn't know what they want to do. And now, because they worked with robotics and they worked with parts and they worked with pieces, now they want to produce, they want to be a doctor. I get to see the kid who thought he wanted to be a doctor. <laughs> and after many years of working on the technical aspect, now knows he was always going to be an engineer. Good job. So on behalf of every kid that I've coached in the 20 years that I've done this, and at least 10 teams a year at seven apiece. Well, I didn't get a CISD education, so I can't do the math for you. Um, <laughs> it's been a lot, a lot of kids. And thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, also, again, sorry, Andrew would like to say a few things for you. <laughs> <laughs> DI, it just really fosters a great sense of community. The three pillars of DI are teamwork, creativity, and innovation. And I've been doing this for the past six years. I've been with this team specifically for the past three. And just really in that time, you really learn how to develop integral teamwork skills that are necessary to function just as a daily part of life. So I think that it's great, and I really appreciate the support of CISD, especially because this year um, there was talk about at the state competition only funding the first and second place teams, and my team actually received fifth in the state competition, which still qualifies to go to globals, but so I really appreciate that we were offered the chance to go on to the global final level and really represent the district that raised us this entire time, so thank you. Item 2B, uh, Special District Recognition 2015 UIL Class 6A Boy Shot Put in Discus Throw State Champion, Dr. Stockton. Thank you, Mr. Husband. I'm going to ask Dr. Curtis Null, Assistant Superintendent for Secondary Education, to come to the podium to introduce the coaches of uh, this young man. Good evening, President Husbands, Dr. Stockton, members of the board. This is truly an honor for me. Um, as Mr. Sanders said, we sit back and we're often in awe of our students and all that they accomplish. And to go from a global DI champion and now um, to a, a different playing field as we'll honor state champions tonight, it's, it's one of those things that we never take for granted. Uh, winning championships in the state of Texas is very difficult. And oftentimes, uh, when our students from the Woodlands High School win championships, it's Mr. Colstrom's privilege to stand before you to introduce them. He's out of town tonight, so I got the honor and jumped at the opportunity to do that. So tonight we'll honor two state champions, um, but our first one, the shot put and discus state champion, I'm going to introduce head coach of the Woodlands track team, Juris Green, to introduce you to our state champion. <laughs> Thank you. 
Dr. Stockton, members of the board, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. It's been, been a few years. Um, every coach dreams of having an athlete um, in whatever sport or whatever event that leaves you scratching your head and wondering how they did that. Um, Texas being one of the best track and field states in the country, you can go to most any track meets in the weekend and you can see an athlete, a boy or a girl, in one of those 17 events that just leaves you wondering how. When you have an athlete like that on your campus, um, who you get to see day in and day out, rubbing elbows with um, his teammates, and, and not only doing that, but leaving a positive impact on everybody he's around, um, it's truly something special, and it's something, as a coach, you don't take for granted. Uh, the young man I have the pleasure of introducing to you, um, as a freshman, not only qualified for the state meet in the shot put, uh, but in one of his final throws, through 60 feet, eight inches, uh, to not only grab a bronze medal, but become the number five freshman shot putter of all time in this country. Fast forward a year uh, into a sophomore year, um, not only does he qualify for the state meet again consecutively, but not only just in the shot put, but also in the discus, and to come away with two individual gold medals um, and be ranked in the country in both of those events throughout his season um, really sounds alarm bells off and confirms those bells that have been ringing in my head about just how special this young man is. Um, this young man in a, in a couple weeks will travel to the Midwest to the World Youth Trials uh, in the hopes of uh, qualifying to represent his country in Bogota, Colombia uh, at, uh, at the World Youth Championships um, in August. And gives me absolute pleasure uh, to introduce not only um, his coach, Gary Medor, uh, behind, the podium, uh, behind this pole here, uh, <laughs> but uh, this special athlete, uh, Adrian Pippery. Item 2C, Dr. Stockton, Special District Recognition 2015, UIL, Class 6A, Girls High Jump State Champion. I will ask uh, Dr. Null to also introduce this very special young lady. Well, once again, this is a privilege. And one, one thing I want to point out for you this year, the long, the long history of the Woodlands High School and the great history of athletic competition in the state of Texas, this is the first year that we've had a 6A classification. So forever in the record books in the state of Texas, these two young people that you've met tonight will be listed as the first state champions in their categories. So forever, when that list is formed, they'll always be at the top. So that's one, one more thing to be proud of, of them tonight. And to introduce our state champion high jumper will be a coach from the Woodlands High School girls team, John McCarthy. Thank you, Dr. Stockton, members of the board. Uh, I am immensely proud to be here tonight. This is my first year coaching with uh, the girls track team, and I couldn't be more proud to introduce someone like Ellie. Uh, she not only being the state champion in the high jump, she was an integral member to the 4x2 and 4x4 relay teams that also qualified uh, for the state meet. Uh, she's triple jump. She's long jump for us. I think if we asked her to run the two mile, she would. Um, and she's she's the kind of athlete that you want to have when you coach. They're there before practice. They stay long. They are doing what they're supposed to without even being told. And couldn't be a better young lady that would accomplish this feat. Um, so I'll just keep it short. Eliana Long. Thank you. 
On behalf of the, uh, the board as well as the entire school district, it's our honor. I guess first I want to say also that uh, the great thing about this district is also the world-class coaches that we have uh, that are, are not just focused on producing the best athletes, but also producing the best young women and, and young men that have just brilliant, bright futures ahead of them. And uh, I know in track, I was never a, a track person, but I know a lot of us don't appreciate the countless hours and just individual dedication, support, and hard work out there by yourself, uh, jumping over and over and over again to accomplish the goal that you did, which is a huge just a huge accomplishment. We're so proud of you as a district and so proud of you as a as a community to, to you and your coaches. So it's our honor to present you with this award. Congratulations. <laughs> I don't know. I think this young lady has some parents. I'm not sure who's with each one of them. Or do you have any family members yes. with you tonight? Yes. <laughs> would you, would, Coach, would you come back up here and or, or have the student introduce his family? <laughs> you can do it from there if he wishes. <laughs> You're perfect. You're fine. Uh, this is my mom. <laughs> uh, it's great. <laughs> I have uh, my father and my uh, two siblings, my brother and his sister. They're home right now with my cousin, and they couldn't be here. But I know they would love to be here to support me. And I know that she's happy to be here to support me, and I'm just grateful for that. Oh, good job. Mom, Mom, we we appreciate you sharing him with the with the school district. Oh, happy okay? to. And thank you. <laughs> you can put him right there, honey, if you wish. I didn't mean to embarrass anybody. <laughs> Well, congratulations to you, ma'am, on a wonderful daughter. I'm sorry, we got to, the DI parents still here? If you just stand. Any of you still here? Awesome. I think it's terrible, Ellie, that your mom's not proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> Item 2D, a special district recognition custodial maintenance department employees. Dr. Stockton? Well, we, we had an opportunity to meet some very special students. Now we get the opportunity to meet and recognize some very special employees. I'm going to ask Marshall Schrader our Director of Maintenance and Custodial Services to the podium. Uh, President, Husband, Dr. Stockton, members of the board. 
It is my honor today to present for your recognition the 2014-2015 Ambassadors of the Year for the Maintenance and Custodial Department. Uh, these employees are shining examples of the best of our department, uh, always willing to go the extra mile to serve Conroe ISD. As I call your name, please come forward uh, and remain standing in the front until all names have been called. Luis Guevara from South Maintenance, been with the Maintenance Department since July of 2011 as an electrician apprentice. <laughs> Matilda Ortega, South Custodial, has been with the district since November of 2010, and she works the night shift at the Woodlands High School. <laughs> Anthony Thatch, who is the director's wildcar selection, he's been with the district since May of 1991, and he's a custodian at Vogel Intermediate. Rosa Ajeda from North Custodial. She was unable to be with us tonight. Uh, been with the district since August 1994, and she works a swing shift at Milam Elementary. And also Mr. Joe Schwinn was also unable to be with us tonight. Works for North Maintenance. Uh, he's been with, since, been with us since May 2002, and he's a wastewater treatment operator and a water wall operator. I just like to say for one one second, guys, on behalf of Dr. Stocker and the Board of Trustees, we just want to say thank you for all that you do. You guys are truly the unsung heroes of CISD. You guys, I think we all can attest to how great our facilities look, how well run those facilities are. Um, I mean, I can't say how many times I've gone into those facilities and just been all. Um, I wish I would have went to school in some facilities as nice as we have in CISD. Maybe I would have turned out a little better than I am now. But in essence, we want to just say thank you for everything that you do. You guys keep the place clean. You keep us made, you keep us going, you just keep the places in phenomenal condition, whether it be the electrical side, electrical side of things or the general day-to-day -day housekeeping side of things or just anything in any capacity as relates to maintaining and keeping the place running. You guys are just behind the scenes getting it done and we just can't say thank you enough. So we really appreciate it, truly. Thank you guys. <laughs> Thank you for everything. We appreciate all you do. Great job, sir. I appreciate everything. Thank, Thank you for all you do. Thank you for all you do for us. Thank you very much. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for all you do. Great team. Item 2E, citizen participation. Secretary, do we have uh, anybody that would wish to address the board? Very good. The next 30 minutes have been designated for public participation by patrons who have signed up to address the board in accordance with board policy BED. Please remember that the board cannot discuss or act upon any issues that are not posted on our agenda. The board has adopted complaint policies that are designed to secure at the lowest administrative level a prompt and equitable solution of complaints and concerns. These policies provide that if a resolution cannot be reached administratively, the person may appeal the administrative decision to the board 
as properly posted agenda item. Copies of the district's complaint policies can be found on the district's website. Those who have registered to address the board will be limited to five minutes for their presentation. Delegations of five or more must appoint one representative to, to present their views to the board. Ms. Ferris, please call the first person who has signed up to address the board. Gary Hutton. Dr. Stockton, members of the board, it's recently come to my attention that Conroe ISD's policy on parents that are registered sex offenders and the district's administrative guidelines not, may, may not be in line. The board policy GKC local reads, register sex offenders on district premises. All visitors' names shall be processed through a database containing the names of registered sex offenders. Notwithstanding any provisions of policy or to the contrary, any visitors who verified to be registered sex offenders shall not be allowed general access to the campus. Campus administrators shall proceed in accordance with GKC regulation. GKC regulation is not posted to anyone on Conroe ISD's website. Parents. A parent who is a registered sex offender and who has a student currently enrolled in the district shall be allowed access to his or her student's records. Contact with teachers and campus administrators shall be ad admitted with an appointment with the campus principal. My interpretation of this policy is that access to the campus would be limited to the front office and only after making an appointment with the principal. I think that this is the understanding of most of the parents with children in Conroe ISD. Administrative guidelines differ from this policy. The parent who is a registered sex offender is allowed to enter the campus if they are escorted by a member of CISD staff. This allows a registered sex offender to be in the cafeteria at lunchtime. Uh, a parent who is a registered sex offender is permitted to attend after school activities um, because there is no raptor in the evenings and therefore no control of made of the registered sex offenders. I understand the desire to have parents involved in students in schools. I accept that a registered sex offender still has certain parental rights, but I'd like the board to consider the rights of the students in Conroe ISD. They have a right to be safe while they're on district property. The Conroe ISD goals state this. Ensuring that a registered sex offender is kept out of our schools should be our priority of the administration and the board. In researching the policies, I have found several districts that have similar guidelines, but I've not found any that have fewer controls than Conroe ISD. The majority have far more stringent guidelines and most restrict access, most restrict access to the campus along the lines of my interpretation of GKC Local. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'd like to uh, move item 8A um, forward at this time, uh, naming uh, item 8A, naming a principal of Conroe High School ninth grade campus, Dr. Stockton. Okay, it's always my pleasure uh, to have the opportunity to recommend a principal to the board for consideration. I, I consider one of the most important things that I do. And um, tonight I'm very excited to recommend uh, Brian Gorka to you for the principal position of the ninth grade campus of Connor High School. Very good. I hear a motion. Motion. Second? I second the motion. Any discussion? Questions? No. If not, all those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Congratulations, Mr. Gorka. President Husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton, I want to truly thank you for the opportunity to lead Conroe High School's ninth grade campus. I am honored and humbled to be the new principal of the campus that begins our students' successful journey through their high school years. I look forward to working with and learning from Dr. Weatherly. His leadership of our great district's flagship high school is recognized statewide. I also want to take the time to congratulate Dr. Stickler on becoming the new principal of Moorhead Junior High. Dr. Stickler has set a high standard for our ninth grade campus and it is my goal to continue to increase these expectations and make our great community proud. Of course, this evening would not be possible without the support of my family. I want to thank my wife, Tanya. Who's in the back? She is going on her 10th year in CISD as a math teacher. 
Thank you for sharing your experiences and knowledge. I truly appreciate and grow through our conversations. Working in such a great district with our, a strong curriculum instruction focus has uh, made us both proud and helped us both grow. Also must take this time to thank my daughter, Nixon, who will be one of our district's fifth grade students next year. You have always helped remind me of the value of seeing through the eyes of our children. Every classroom should be built upon respect, creating an environment that nourishes every child's passion to succeed. I also want to take this time to thank my parents. I learned the value of a strong work ethic through their example. The relationships they developed as educators inspired me to become one as well. My father, Dennis Gorka, was an athletic director and head football coach and retired from education as a high school principal. My mother, Cindy Gorka, who retired as a high school lead counselor, lost her battle to cancer going on seven years ago, but I, tonight she will be proud. Dennis Gorka is in the back. My father. <laughs> As my thoughts of those who have influenced me continue, I can't miss the opportunity to thank two men who have been very important mentors and supporters of my career in CISD, Dr. Curtis Knoll and Mr. Tommy Johnson. Your support and encouragement have helped me and have paid my way through this great district. Thank you very much. In conclusion, I'm so excited to be part of Connor High School, a school rich in traditions. I know that with the leadership of administration, excellent teachers and a staff uh, and parent support and a motivated student body, Conroe High School ninth grade campus will continue to excel. Thank you for this great opportunity. Thank you. Item three is the consent agenda. Uh, I've heard no request to remove any items. Uh, if that continues to be so, it, I would uh, entertain a motion. Mr. President, I would move we approve the consent agenda as presented. Thank you. And a second? Second. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Item four, a recommendation of facilities planning committee. Dr. Stockton. Okay, I'm gonna uh, read a statement and introduce our speaker. Uh, from 2003 to 2013, CISD gained approximately 16,000 students to meet the needs related to this growth. The community passed two bond referendums, one in 2004 and one in 2008. From these two referendums, 14 new schools were built along with numerous major additions. Additionally, CISD built an elementary school and completed several other major additions out of fund balance. <clears throat> CISD continues to experience heavy growth and is expected to have an enrollment in excess of 58,000 students in just a few months in August of 2015. With growth in mind in August of 2014, the Board of Trustees approved the agreement to hire population survey analysts uh, to complete a demographic study for CISD. That study has recently been completed and is on the district website for everyone's um, use. The study indicates that our heavy growth pattern will continue with expected growth of between 1,400 and 1,700 students per year for the next five years and increasing uh, gr even greater after that. At the February Board of Trustees meeting, I asked the board to approve the 2015 Facility Planning Committee for the purpose of reviewing the district's projected growth and instructional needs for the next three to five years and making a recommendation to the board to address those needs while impacting the tax rate as minimally as possible. The Facility Planning Committee has finished their work and tonight they are here to make a recommendation to the board. Uh, Facility Planning Committee member Scott Moore is going to make that recommendation. Mr. Moore. First of all, on behalf of the committee, President Husbands, members of the board, we'd like to say thank you for your foresight and your dedication to the students of Conroe ISD, uh, for looking forward to the future uh, needs of this district and assembling this committee and setting us about our task. Thank you to Dr. Stockton and the CISD administrators and staff of the central office who put in countless hours behind the scenes doing research for us, finding answers to our questions. 
as well as to the campus administrators who took the time to open their campuses to us after school hours to give us tours to let us see firsthand uh, the needs of the existing campuses, uh, to answer our questions, to share information about their schools with us. Thank you to the vendors and the contractors who joined with us in our meetings, uh, who've worked so diligently to share their information and their expertise with us. And I'd like to say a special thank you to the facility planning committee members, uh, many of whom are here tonight. Would it be appropriate to ask them to stand and please, please, please be recognized? You bet. <clears throat> Thank you for your dedication to the students of Conroe ISD and uh, on a personal note, your compassion and your desire to make Conroe ISD a better place for our students to learn has been truly inspiring to me. Thank you to everyone who's been involved in this process regardless of your district position. Uh, the level of transparency of information and the honest dialogue that we engaged in uh, was absolutely amazing and it should serve as a model for other organizations. Because of that transparency and the willingness to share an open and honest dialogue, we feel that the recommendations that we bring to you tonight are fully informed and represent the best scenario to address the continued success of Conroe ISD. Before I begin with the specifics of our recommendations, I just want to say that there has been one driving question underlying all of our conversations over these previous three months, and that is, what is best for the students of this school district and what will provide them with the richest learning environment possible. Everything that we have done has been with those students in mind. The Facility Planning Committee met over a three-month period, March, April, and May of this year, and each meeting was conducted according to the same basic agenda format. We looked at an overview of the district um, uh, demographics facilities. We looked at the financial implications of the process we were asked to examine. We spent a lot of time with the data from the population and survey analysts. We looked at bond modeling, and we looked at the construction cost of the various scenarios that we were asked to consider. We spent quite a bit of time with that PASA data. As you heard Dr. Stockton say, between 2003 and 2013, our district added approximately 16,000 students. That same PASA data indicates that this district will add approximately 8,000 more students in the next five years. By way of comparison, that's approximately the student population of Montgomery ISD in the 2014-2015 school year. We are projected to add an entire school district's worth of student population in five years. We also looked quite extensively at the facility and condition assessment, which was undertaken this past fall. Using information in that assessment provided by architects, engineers, district planning and construction department, and district maintenance, we were able to get a clear picture of the needs of the current district facilities. As we examined all of this information, the needs sort of fell out naturally into four categories. Needs to address anticipated student population growth, district-wide needs of existing facilities, major classroom renovations to existing campuses, and land purchases to address future needs. The recommendation that we bring before you tonight is broken down into those four categories. The first, the growth needs. We are proposing one new high school in the current Oak Ridge High School feeder zone, one new junior high school in the current Conroe High School feeder zone, one new intermediate school in the Oak Ridge High feeder zone, two new elementary schools in the Oak Ridge High feeder zone, one of which would be on or near the Riley Fuzzle corridor and one would be along the 242 corridor. A build out of the remaining 200 seat capacity at Stewart Elementary in the Wood Forest subdivision. As you'll remember, that school opened this previous year, it was designed and built with the possibility of a thousand student capacity, but it was only completed to a capacity of 800, and we are recommending uh, finishing the build out for the remaining 200 capacity there. And the addition of 10 new science classrooms at Knox Junior High in the Woodlands. Addressing district-wide needs at existing facilities, uh, we had a lot of focus on ongoing safety and security upgrades and continuing the district's layered approach to safety. These include uh, additional um, construction of front entry vestibules, cameras, electronic access controls, and fencing, 
We looked at life cycle issues, things such as drainage improvements, flooring, roofing, electrical, painting, plumbing, chillers, boilers, all of those things that are considered normal life cycle issues. Historically, this district has done a wonderful job in this area. We have over 30 campuses that are over 30 years old. For most of us, 30 years doesn't sound like that old, but if you're a floor tile or an electrical outlet or a plumbing fixture, <laughs> that's old age. You need a little work. <laughs> we also looked at what were uh, considered to be priority one issues, and these were maintenance issues that fell outside the normal life cycle improvements. These are issues uh, such as civil engineering matters, architectural issues, mechanical issues, electrical issues, plumbing, roofing. And essentially, if these priority one issues are not immediately addressed, it will negatively affect the ability of the schools to operate. We looked at major classroom renovations, specifically to two existing campuses that are uh, getting uh, quite long in the tooth. Um, these issues must be addressed to safely and adequately continue instruction on these campuses. When we looked at the cost of these potential renovations versus the cost of completely replacing the campus, as well as the anticipated life expectancy of the potential renovations, we felt that this was the most financially responsible approach to address these two campuses. The first of those is Austin Elementary. We are proposing uh, adding a new addition to the back or south side of the building, if you're familiar with how that school is situated along 105, um, and then in a later phase to remove the older structure. Uh, that building is essentially in two sections. The older section, the original section, is over 60 years old mm -hmm. um, and has some major issues um, that are going to negatively in impact the ability to use that portion of the building. So we're proposing building a new addition on the back relocating the students to the new section and then tearing down the old section. This would uh, increase the length of the car rider queue, get more traffic off of 105, increase the safety for those parents and those students, moving the front entrance further back off of the highway, moving the playground further back off the highway. And the architects and the engineers believe that this phased approach to that campus could be done without interrupting instruction time on the campus. The second campus we addressed uh, in a similar manner was Conroe High School. Uh, we looked at major renovations to existing structures, the construction of additional classroom space, and again, this would be a multi-phase project that would lengthen the life expectancy, particularly of some of the auxiliary buildings, as well as providing anticipated growth uh, classroom space. And again, we believe that these phases could be done without interrupting instructional time. Uh, there are simply portions of that building that once renovations begin, they will be rendered inoperable and we will not have them available for instructional use. The last uh, section that we looked at was land purchases. Uh, you've heard, you're all familiar with the demographic data. We live in one of the fastest growing counties in the state and in the nation. And in order to position ourselves uh, for the anticipated needs in the coming years, uh, we feel it's much more prudent to purchase land at today's prices rather than at prices five, ten years down the road. The last bond referendum brought before the voters of Conroe ISD was in May of 2008, and it's been over seven years since this board asked the voters to approve a bond for district needs. For a district this size, that's a very long time. Based on an incredibly comprehensive amount of inf information regarding the district needs, as well as what we believe are well-informed financial projections and taking into account anticipated inflation factors and contingency concerns, the 2015 Conroe ISD Facility Planning Committee is recommending a bond proposal in the amount of No motion is necessary. <laughs> That's great. I, I just want to take a moment. I, I know most of you on the committee. I know some of you very, very well. And I know the time that you've taken away from your anywhere from grandchildren to office to practice to bank to uh, whatever has been extensive. And uh, I want to thank you personally for your service to this uh, school district. We take uh, what we do very seriously. And uh, we had some very serious people, very capable people on this uh, 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 
on this committee, and we thank you for your service. Let's give them another round of applause. <laughs> Mr. President, before we moved on, move on, can I say a few words? Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> please, please. I, I too want to thank you for your commitment. Um, <clears throat> the uh, the amount of um, serious thought um, was just greatly appreciated, and and the thing that I appreciate, and, and we have a theme in Conroe ISD that you've heard, all means all, that every one of our children are important to us. That collectively, the group never wavered from what's best for all children which is so impressive. So thank you for that commitment. Uh, appreciate all of your efforts. Great job, guys. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Item 4B, Dr. Stockton's uh, select IBIA group uh, architects for new flex school, Oak Ridge Theater Zone. At this time, I'll ask Easy Foster, our director of um, planning construction, to come to the podium, please. And if I could interrupt you, Mr. Foster. I know, uh, speaking of the amount of time you spent, if you would like to uh, uh, exit at <laughs> this time, I, we would certainly understand it. But budget is coming up if you'd like to hear that. <laughs> They're a pretty quiet group. Mr. Foster, please proceed. <clears throat> President Husbands, Dr. Stockton, members of the board, it's my pleasure tonight to bring forward for your consideration the selection of IBI Group Architects to design a new flex school in the Oak Ridge feeder zone uh, and select them for the pre-construction design services and then delegate the authority to Dr. Stockton to negotiate and execute the owner-architect agreement. This time, IBI Group Architects is recommended to be selected in accordance with the Texas Government Code to perform the pre-construction and design services for a new flex school in the Oak Ridge Feeder Zone. IBI Group Architects is recommended for approval for this project because the district believes them to be highly qualified as based on their demonstrated competency and qualifications. And a contract will be executed provided, the district, uh, provided to the district at a fair and reasonable price. This time, I request your approval of this selection. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Questions? Discussion. Questions. Discussion. Please proceed. What's the dollar? Did you? Do we say dollar amount? No. At this time, we're just asking for the for approval for them to um, to uh, do design services for us. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Very good. And Mr. Foster, uh, my question is simply this: um, We built a number of flex schools. Okay, 16 to be pretty exact, I think. That is exact. Um, and we have used the, uh, variations of the same footprint over and over again, basically the same school. Now, we one of the reasons we accomplished that and did that was to obtain um, value in the in the lack of re-engineering every time for a new elementary school. That is correct. By changing architects. Or being very blunt, by changing architectural firms that have done the other 16 schools, are we, I think all 16 of them were by the same architect. I frankly don't even know that for sure, but I believe they were. Are we losing any of that value, uh, that savings that we save by using that same design? Well, it, it, it's uh, not as simple as that. The answer is not that simple, but in short, we are taking the, the structure, the building, the flexible building we spent the last decade or decade and a half developing. I've, I've worked with uh, PBK, the original architect of the what we consider the flex school program of which we built 16 campuses. Uh, we've refined those and, and scrubbed the drawings. We've put all the changes we've made to it in, the, in that model and we've delivered that model to IBI to start the process for the new flex school. And the, and the process of the new flex school is not to entertain a new designer into our program. The process is to take a very efficient model that we've come to know and understand and economize the footprint because the land prices, as, as you heard from our, our bond committee presentation, are going up and the sizes of the lots that are available from our developers are getting smaller. So we're taking a, a pretty spread out wide footprint, 
trying to maintain the same capacity, we had more efficiency out of that footprint, as well as maintain the integrity of, of the, the look and feel of the schools that, that we're entertaining. So at this time, I mean, we've got uh, PBK busy on a very large project for us already. So we're taking the economies of having another firm available to us to, to refine that plan even further so that we can have what we consider the next generation of flex schools to move forward. Okay, so what I heard you just say is we're going to spend some money refining the blue, the, 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 the footprint, but we would do that regardless of changing because the, the, the plan is ours. It's not PBK's design. It's our design. That, I mean, the, the plans we well, own. That answers my question. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> frankly, I mean, if that's so. Yes, sir. Okay. Any other questions? I have a question. Yes, so, so I, I appreciate the fact that we're going to have, as I understand it, a smaller school footprint than we've had in the past. Uh, well, I mean, we, we are working together with the IBI group to take the, the same overall capacity of the building mm -hmm. and find a way to economize the footprint so that right. we get the same facilities, more or less the same overall square footage, but in a more efficient pattern or layout on the site so we can make <coughs> use of smaller sites. Okay. Do you have an idea of what the differences in land size from those economies, what we're talking, are we, I mean, because what is it on a flex school, it's how many acres of land? 16, 16, 17. 16 or 17 yeah, acres of land. Yeah. So are we talking about going to 10 or 12 or? Well, we actually have just a, a, just a, just a question. I'm just trying to understand. I, I agree with everything you're talking about. Uh, prices of land probably won't go down. So, uh, later in the agenda, we have a, a potential land site, uh, 15.5 acres. Right, I read that. So, so yeah. it's a little bit smaller. Okay. Well, and and we're also, I mean, I'm, we're trying to take into account all the all the developer pieces of land that have been brought to us over the last six or eight months because we don't bring all of them forward because they're not right. viable. Right. Right. But we're trying to look at our what we consider our worst case scenario we're working at and trying to make a plan that fits that, which is not necessarily the site that you're considering tonight. Right. But we're trying to make sure we have something that we can move forward with and achieve those economies that we've, we've enjoyed over the last 15, 16 years. Yeah, I'm not an expert on construction, but as I understand, no matter what site you pick, I mean, you have to uniquely kind of design the building to that site. Right, there, there is always a consideration for drainage and underground right. facility and having exactly. to get rid of the, the uh, ugly stuff that comes out of the building. So we may not <laughs> create some economy in land savings totally. We may create some economies, like you said, in footprint design and use. Correct. I mean, okay. and, that, and that's really what yeah. we're after is to create okay. a more, yeah. a more the, efficient layout of the same building. Okay. okay. All right. And, and the key is we might. Wor worst come to worst, we have the same design. We use basically the same design with, a, you know, we've improved it several times or, or at least within within the same footprint. We've, we've changed it around some. That is absolutely correct. And we work with Dr. Gibson and her department uh, on the elementary uh, and uh, intermediate schools to make sure that the key features that we enjoy that we've improved upon are ideas that consider and carry forward to the next design. Very good. Uh, uh, one more question. I hate to delay this. Oh, please. The vote here. What exactly are we approving? We're, we're approving the selection of the design firm for this particular project. Okay, so we're approving that. And as far as negotiations and all that other good stuff, you said there's no dollar amount associated with this approval. Well, we so that's to yet to be determined. Right. Well, we, the, the, the way design services are generally offered to us are at a percentage of construction cost. So there will be a, a design breakdown in their proposal that has some fee that we will, we will encumber if the project never goes to construction. Understood. So, okay. so, so what were the criteria used to select IBI? Uh, I mean, why, why do we select that? I don't well, even necessarily know the specifics correct. item, line item, by line well, item. The, the, what, government, what? the government code allows us to select a design professional based on demonstrated competence. So IBI demonstrated their competence in a procurement that we did a little over a year ago to bring IBI and PBK to the table as design firms that we would do long-range and facility planning for us. Over the course of that long-range and facility planning, they delivered to us uh, examples and prototypes and, and, it, and just what examples of their experience. I've talked to other districts that use them for design services. I've talked to my peers who do what I do with for other districts, uh, found that they have demonstrated their competence and demonstrated their ability to perform over and over again, uh, like we would expect for any of our vendors. Okay, so what was this put out for bid? 
Say it again. Was it was this a put out? Well, it is. It it. Uh, you say bid. Uh, it, we are not able to select design services based on price. Okay. I'll it is only on demonstrated confidence. Understand. Okay. That's all I have. Okay. Any other questions? Comments? We have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. <coughs> all opposed, like sign. Thank you very much. Uh, <coughs> item. Sorry. <coughs> item 4C. I'd just like to approve the guaranteed maximum price amendment for uh, track tennis court life cycle renovation project and delegate authority to you. Sir. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Foster, please. Again, I'm, I'm, it's my pleasure to bring forward for your consideration the approval of the amendment, which is the guaranteed maximum price for the track and tennis court life cycle renovation project, and delegate the authority to execute the contract documents to Dr. Stockton, our school superintendent. Brookstone Construction was selected previously as the construction manager at risk for this project, and the district has negotiated a guaranteed maximum price for the project of $609,114. This guaranteed maximum price amendment has been reviewed and approved by our outside council, and this project uh, will be completed during the summer. Uh, the project is normal life cycle uh, repairs to tracks and tennis courts uh, throughout the district. The funding from the project comes from general fund. This time I'd like to request your approval. You've uh, heard the description. Do I have a motion? So made. And a second? Second. Any questions? Discussion? Who, who's doing the construction? We haven't gotten to that point. Brookstone? Okay. Yeah, I didn't get that far. Okay. It's in there. Mm -hmm. it's in there. Okay. I, I have. <coughs> no, <after> you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just want to make a comment more than anything. I'm glad to see that we're able to use general fund rather than have to, to take bonded indebtedness to go out and do this. And I'm, I'm very proud of us for doing that. Well, I, I can't take credit for that. That comes completely from our finance department and how they manage our budget. Good job, guys. Yeah. And gals, I have a question, um, and, and it's simply how it's how it comes together, or, or, or the you know the makeup of the. Here we're we're extending or, or amending an original contract, as opposed to starting a new one, and two or three projects. You know, a, 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 I'm just going to say a track and a tennis court and a and a breezeway or whatever. Okay, whatever it is, uh, why do we? amend another contract that Brookstone, one of our regular vendors, okay, was working on. I just I just don't understand why we amend that contract versus start again. Well, uh, and not to confuse, because uh, it, it's really a semantics deal. Uh, the original contract is original for Brookstone on this. They were hired to be the construction manager for the track and tennis court life cycle job. The amendment is just part two of a two-part contract process. Oh, please, please. Part one is the owner contractor agreement. Part two is the amendment that establishes the guarantee maximum price. I, I didn't follow that. Now I understand. That's, Thank that's you. Okay. Any other questions, comments? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Very much. And item 4D, stock and approve G701 2001 change order and guarantee maximum price agreement, Oak Ridge Elementary, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Mr. Foster. <laughs> it's, it's my pleasure to also bring forward for you. Uh, for approval of this change order, which uh, Mr. Husbands, I believe, is what you're referring to, because this is taking a, an existing contract we have in progress and then changing that contract amount to add scope to that to that project. Sorry, I had my items that, confused. That's quite all right. Uh, this change order is uh, established to include uh, walkway cover repairs and modifications at the Conroe High School Ninth Grade campus. Uh, be repairs and modifications to the entry walkway, which goes out to the flagpole in front of that campus. It is also to do a classroom renovation for Hauser Elementary, a classroom re renovation at Haley Elementary, and a uh, computer lab renovation at Colson Tough Intermediate. We're also doing freezer and cooler modifications at Oak Ridge Elementary, Travis Intermediate, and Sam Houston Elementary. We're here to ask you tonight is to approve this change order and delegate the authority to Dr. Stockton to sign the ex, uh, and execute the contract documents. The original contract for a change ordering is for Ellisor Constructors, which were selected as construction manager risk for the Oak Ridge Elementary and Miscellaneous Mechanical 2015 project uh, earlier this year. Uh, the change order 
amends the agreement to include all the work we had just, just described and add to it. The contract has been reviewed by outside counsel, and these projects will be completed uh, this summer. The total cost of additional projects covered by this change order is $300,000. $58, and project funding will be allocated through the general fund. This time we request your approval. I'm uh, I move that the board approve the G701 change order and guaranteed maximum price amendment, amendment for the project detailed in the board item 4D and delegate authority to the superintendent to execute the change order and contract documents. Second. And I have a motion and a second. Any questions? Discussion? Yes, sir. Question. Um, ninth grade walkway cover repair. What? Um, I'm curious about the change order, and I'm curious about that one because I believe how old is that campus? How old does that work? Uh, it's Actually, the part we're talking about is yeah. there's a fault line that runs yeah. through okay. that campus, and that covered nose that sticks out, mm -hmm. the fault line shifted. And part of it um, collapsed. Collapsed. So we've we've cordoned it off. It I've seen that. That's collapse. what I figured it was. I just want to make sure it didn't collapse. Not completely. It didn't well. completely. Collapse. <laughs> it also got the gymnasium, which has already been demolished, yes. right? Yes. Okay. Yes. <coughs> okay. Well, so that's the part we're talking about. That's a Thank big you. bulk of well, it. And, and I want that's to point out uh, this change order includes that particular portion of the change order is a not to exceed cost because we've been through. We spent. We we found the issue just before spring break. And, and we've been going through all kinds of detailed operations trying to figure out what is the best solution. So what, what you're looking at is a, a not to exceed price for a worst case scenario. Uh, mm -hmm. if you, when, when you approve it, I hope, uh, we will engage the architects and engineers to come up with the best solution, work with our administration to make sure it is what we want to do, and then execute that, execute that solution. Mr. Foster, that begs the question for me, how often do, does the fault line shift? Uh, all the time through the one to Conroe. Yeah. It, it often as it was. One, of, one of our former board members built a house on Pier and Beam in, in Old Town Conroe for that exact reason. It runs all the way just north of Travis. So, 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 so how do we, what, what are we, are we entertaining options of going around or building, a, I mean, what, what, what because uh, it seems like we're going to be right back at where we, well, we back have, here in a couple of years. We have looked, looked at options just to repair what's there, which is a short-term fix. Yeah. We've looked at options of bridging it, which is also a short-term fix. We've looked at options of tearing it down completely. We've looked at options of shortening it and changing the paving structure outside. So we're, uh, we've included in the in guaranteed max in, in this change order document the worst case scenario so that we can explore what is the most okay, so we get mm -hmm. and, then, and not just give money away. So what money we don't spend comes back to us at, at face value. I'm sure. and, and beyond the money, when the phase does, when the design actually comes in, that will be another approval of this board. Well, no, that's one reason we're attaching it to the existing Oak Ridge Elementary project because we already have a designer engaged for Oak Ridge Elementary. We already have a structural engineer engaged for Oak Ridge Elementary, uh, so we're able. This will assimilate into that contract, and that that uh, purchase order for those design services will will grow as a natural uh, progression. I'm sorry. Let me, let me say it this way: If you decide to put a big lion instead of a tiger on the front of Conroe High School ninth grade campus, will we get the opportunity to say yes or no to that? Yes, yeah. you will. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Any other further questions? Discussion? Very good. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, item 4E: Capital Improvement Improvements Update. Dr. Stockton. Mr. Foster. At this time, I'd like to take you through an update of our capital improvements that are in progress. Starting with the Oak Ridge High School ninth grade campus, this campus is on schedule. It's scheduled to turn over for student occupation for school next fall. What you're looking at is what you've seen before. It's the finished front entry of that building. Uh, as we enter the, the classroom addition, you can see the, the what you're looking at are primed walls getting ready for the finished coats of paint to go on. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, we are delivering casework. We're delivering carpet. We're delivering all the finished materials for it now. Uh, as you can see, the, that building has begun to populate on the inside. The exterior of the campus is uh, the brickwork is, is for the most part complete. We're now getting around to installing windows, and if it will ever stop raining, we'll actually make the landscape look good. <laughs> Uh, you're looking at a picture now of the foundation installation for the walkway cover we approved at a past board meeting to connect the senior campus to the ninth grade campus. Mm -hmm. At Oak Ridge Elementary, again, this project is also on schedule, and if you'll recall, it's a uh, mechanical overhaul, so it's an air conditioning mm -hmm. and building systems overhaul of that building. Uh, what you're looking at now are the major pieces of equipment. You saw the equipment arrive last month. You saw you're seeing the piping connections being made this month. Uh, as you get into that building, since school has been out, we've been able to take the entire ceiling out of that building and everything in the ceiling out of that building. So what you're looking at are the uh, miscellaneous electrical whips and connections for light fixtures and things of that nature. We have removed all the ductwork and piping. We've uh, completed uh, all that work since school's out. And if you were to go there today, everything is going back in as we speak. That uh, building is actually on a 24-hour shift, so we're working two shifts, 7-7 seven seven, and then 7-7, seven seven, uh, to complete that building before the staff comes back for uh, next fall. So that is our update. Good job, Sam. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Foster. Thank you. Thank you. Item 5A, financial report, Dr. Tucker. All right, I'll ask Aaron Rice to come present that information. Good evening, President Husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. I'm here tonight to present the financial statements for the district for the month of May. Uh, these statements include the general fund, debt service, child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. The first statement we're looking at this evening is the balance sheet for the district. The balance sheet includes our assets, liabilities, and fund balances of each of the funds. I always like to look at our cash and investments, uh, our largest uh, asset. So as we look at the detail on that, we'll focus on the general fund. As you can see in the general fund, we have cash on hand of $500. We have bank deposits of $213,000. Invested in ex external pool funds is $64,709,000. Uh, in our Capital One Now account, we have uh, $99.6 million in that account. And our long-term investments, uh, $60,600,000. The next statement we'll look at is our income statement. The income statement shows our revenues and expenditures and fund balance for the district. Revenues are in three categories, local and intermediate sources, state program revenues, and federal program revenues. So we'll take a look at our largest uh, source is local. And this is the detail of our local uh, revenues. As you can see in general fund and debt service fund, property taxes are the largest revenue generator for, for those two funds. And food service is food sales. And self-funded insurance come from premium contributions. We can also look at our expenditures at the functional level for each one of the funds. As you can see in the general fund, instruction is by far our largest uh, category. And also, uh, coming in second is plant, ma plant and maintenance operations at a little over $25 million, with the largest piece of that being our utility bill. Uh, looking at our projected fund balance for the general fund for the end of the year, we're looking at an increase uh, of our fund balance of about $15.5 million. Self-funded insurance for the month of May, we had total revenues of $2,960,000, total expenses of $2,751,000, for revenues over expenses this month of $208,000, so good month. Uh, for the year, we had total re we have total revenues of 26.4 million, total expenses of 26.9 million for revenues under expenses for the total year 517,000. Uh, participation in our wellness centers for the month of May, we had 412 visitors at the Oak Ridge Center and uh, 111 at the Conroe facility. Total of 523 on the month. Looking at our investments, when we ended uh, April, we had 350 million dollars invested. At the end of May, we we're at $323.6 million. Our short-term investments, our, our pools in Capital One have a WAM of one day, and those are yielding uh, 18 and a half basis points. The WAM of our long-term investments is 777 days, uh, yielding 93 basis points. 
The wham of our combined portfolio totals 120 days, yielding a little over 29 basis points. And our benchmark, the 90-day T-bill, is at one basis point. Thank you. Mr. Rice, I have a yes, question sir. for you. Did our facility plan committee request any of this data? Yeah, I provided that to Mr. Cox. Any any financial information that they needed. Okay. Do they request our financial specifically, Mr. Cox? Right. Investment information? Our, all our financial, the balance sheet, our investment financial. situation. Well, we, we looked at uh, basically debt projections and debt, debt service. That's all. That's what they looked at. Investments as well? They did not look at investments, no. Cash on hand? Well, they, they've seen our financials, yeah. Okay. We provided the overview financially to the district, and then specifically, uh, like Mr. Cox said, the debt information, different models on um, sizes of bond issue and impact on tax rates. Mm -hmm. we, didn't we didn't share the investment information, but we did share fund balance information. Understood. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? Discussion? Very good. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Item 9A, consider purchase of uh, approximately 15-acre elementary site. Oak Ridge Feeders on Dutch Dodgers. All right, I'll ask Mr. Cox to come up and present this item. President Husbands, mem members of the board, Dr. Stockton, I recommend the Board of Trustees approve the purchase of a 15.5-acre elementary school site within the Oak Ridge Feeder Zone and authorize the superintendent to execute necessary uh, documents necessary to effectuate the transaction. Uh, this particular site is located in the newest section of development uh, for Imperial Oaks. The developer there, as you probably know, is Mr. Jim Holcomb, who we've bought two other sites from. Uh, the actual legal entity selling the property is, is Imperial Promenade, Inc., which is the developer of this newest section of, of Imperial Oaks. The developer will be providing significant infrastructure support to this site because it is currently uh, not. Uh, we're going into some raw, some some un undeveloped land. Uh, this th this particular development is basically runs from uh, from where Burnham Woods Elementary School is all the way down to uh, the new Grand Parkway and runs around behind Creekside, if you're familiar with that development. This particular site sits on the back side of Creekside. Okay. But as it is right now, there's you can get to it through Creekside, but you can't get to it through his development. So there will be extensive uh, infrastructure you know, to, that will have to be put in place to both service the site and access the site. Uh, the developer will be pro pro providing all the utilities to the site, roads, detention, drainage, clearing, and fill work on the site. Uh, so it's a significant amount uh, of effort related to that. Uh, this is a 15.5 acre site where the purchase price is $3.50 a square foot. Uh, which works out to approximately two million three hundred sixty-three thousand one hundred and thirty dollars. Uh, as you know, the the land costs have been going up, uh, and particularly in this area. Anything in that neighborhood of the uh, new Grand Parkway uh, is uh, is quite pricey these these days. So we think this is a good the extensive cost associated with most of these tracts of land down there because they're, they're, the land prices are getting higher and the, the, the sites are getting more challenging. So I recommend uh, that you approve this purchase. I have a motion. 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 Second. And a second. <laughs> Any discussion? Questions? Uh, I have a question. You didn't specifically say, but using fund balance or are we using the well, debt service fund? We, we uh, this, we will be using uh, land uh, uh, capital bond money that is still ex that from, we have set aside from the current right. bond referendum. Okay. Uh, so well, we have a uh, we have about ten million dollars. Uh, okay. We'll go through that though. <laughs> uh, Coach, earlier we heard a 
description of, of how we were going to uh, proceed with a new footprint of this building. The Actually, this ahead. this will be the, the first site where that is used. Yes, and my question is this. Uh, from memory serves me that it takes approximately 15 to 16 acres to build one of our existing flex We've uh, In recent years, we've been purchasing 16 to 18 acre sites. Uh, so this will be slightly smaller than we have. And because you mentioned that they were going to do detention. Is that no, that's not on this side. That Th they're providing offsite detention. So, yeah. so, but isn't it true with this, when we buy the higher acres that we do our detention on the site? In some yeah, cases. In some cases. The, it depends on the circumstances. Uh, uh, we try to get the developer generally to, to provide that mm -hmm. detention, but uh, we I like on the case of irons, we had to do it. And I realize you haven't seen this design and you don't know how many acres it's going to save because they changed the footprint of the building and so on and so forth. But what, what I'm trying to say is why 15.5 acres, okay, versus 18 versus 13.27 or whatever, I, I'm not, I certainly don't know. But if we're detention's not on the property and we're changing the footprint of the building, it seems like, you know, I mean, at 350 a foot, I'm, I'm all for a smaller track. As small as can be, but not too small. So, I mean, it, how can we buy 15.5 when we don't have the footprint of the building yet and know whether we need that or not? Well, and I'm all for proceeding with land. You understand what I'm saying? I, I understand it's getting more expensive, but I also don't want to buy more than we need. We, we have seen some preliminary layouts that they put together for us to assure us that 15.5 actually works. Do you want to address this? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't. That's, that's right. That's right. If, if, if I may, the uh, we looked and, and we've been used testing every piece of land with our current flex school footprint. So worst case scenario, we've assured uh, Mr. Cox that I can put our current flex school on that piece of land, but and and the but is fairly significant. And as with every piece of land, uh, especially the ones we're looking at now, they're not perfect pieces. So there's something associated with it—a floodway close by. Uh, pipeline, some other problem. This this particular piece of land has some issues that uh, I'm concerned with elevation-wise. So we can get our piece of, get our building on it, but some of the play areas are going to be at such an elevation differential relative to the building that it, it makes sense to economize the floor plan. So we, we can build our current building, but we're going to make this site more efficient, get more stacking space, get more parking area the way we need it to serve the building by economizing the footprint. Quick question: uh, Why why use old bond money to, to purchase it? Just out of curiosity, what, what why would we do that? Well, because when we in that bond referendum, we set aside money to purchase land for future okay. construction, and that that's what it was for. That's what it's for. Okay, thank you. It was part of our contingency plan to elongate the length of time between bonds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I, I had a question. I, I think I know the answer, but just to uh, be able to field this question out in the public, um, like I hear possibly two elementary schools and then another elementary school. And I'm assuming we like to keep our elementary schools, and I heard the thousand, we like to keep them smaller in a community, and I understand all of the benefits, and I'm, I'm for that. Is that kind of the reason why we Instead of a mega elementary school, we're looking to place elementary schools in, in for lack of a better word, strategic areas for communities. Is that the philosophy? Yes, well, yes, especially in a, a population as dense as this population is. If you remember on our field trip, we drove from Snyder Elementary School to Burnham Woods, and we saw all those, all that clearing. That's going to probably service this area. Um, but you know, we, a thousand works for us. Not only from that standpoint, from a standpoint, if you roll it up to the number of students we have in junior high and high school, it all moves it yeah. together. Isn't it also true that administratively in an elementary, you have to start duplicating if you go over that number? I mean, assistant principals and, you know, counselors and so on and so forth. That, that you yeah, know, there's, a, there's a size there that works for us. Yeah, we've, you know, over the years, we've, a thousand works very, very nicely for us. I guess, long story short. Okay. okay. Thanks. <laughs> Any other questions, comments, yes, discussion? We have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign.
Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Cox. Thank you, Mr. Cox. Thank you, Mr. Cox. Thank you, Mr. Cox. Dan spends a lot of time working on these property deals to sometimes to no avail or, or <laughs> gets wicked surprises or whatever, and we appreciate you, sir. Yeah. Uh, all right. Item 9B, Dr. Uh, before we go to 9B, do we want to uh, take a, a five-minute break? Yes. Okay, <laughs> okay so, we'll, so we'll take a break. We're on break. On hold. On break. Check this out, man. You can call the death in there. Um, the meeting of the Colorado ISD Board of Trustees is convened on June 16, 2015. A quorum of the board is present, including the following members, Melanie Bush, Scott Kidd, Ray Sanders, John Husbands, Datron Williams, Jessica Powell, and Skeeter Hubert. The purpose of this item on the board's agenda is to hear the complaint appeal of parent Aaron Crocker in accordance with local board policy FNG. Mrs. Crocker's complaint relates to the events that occurred at the PTO meeting. 